Hi. In this multi-part video series, I'll go over the modern glass cockpit. I'll assume the viewer has no experience with glass cockpits and has only used the traditional six-pack steam gauges. In the description, you'll find a table of contents with links so you can skip portions of the tutorial that don't interest you. Previously, I did a video that covered the basics of how the Garmin G1000 glass cockpit is laid out and how it functions. That video is linked in the description. I'll cover some of that same information in this video in the interest of completeness. In the early 1970s, commercial transport aircraft cockpits were becoming complicated with an array of gauges and instruments that could sometimes number over a hundred. A pilot's ability to absorb information about the status of the aircraft was becoming inhibited by this complexity. Modern glass cockpits like those in the Airbus A350-900 or the F-15EX fighter represent a revolution in the way cockpits for aircraft and spacecraft are designed and built today. The first hints of this revolution appeared in the 1970s, when flight-worthy cathode ray tube screens began to replace a few of the electromechanical displays, gauges, and instruments. These new glass instruments, as few and as primitive as they were, gave the cockpit a distinctly different look. These suggested the name glass cockpit. Advances in display technology, as well as the invention of the microprocessor and development of GPS, led NASA to begin development of what is considered to be the modern glass cockpit today. Early military adoption of this technology was also a major contributor to its development. These new systems allowed the pilot to maintain a level of situational awareness that was previously unattainable with the analog steam gauges. The implementation of the glass cockpit led to the elimination of the role of the flight engineer as a result. If you want to dive deeper into the history of this technology, I've linked to the definitive book on it in the description, Airborne Trailblazer by NASA scientist Lane Wallace. Since our point of reference for this video will be the traditional steam gauges, let's have a quick look at what constitutes a traditional six-pack. For this, I'll use the Cessna 152 provided in the simulator since it has no digital or glass instrumentation whatsoever. My intention here is just a quick overview of the steam gauges and not an avionics lesson. We'll start with the static and pitot based instruments. Our first instrument is the airspeed indicator. It measures the difference between the static pressure from your static ports and the ram pressure from your pitot tube. The static pressures cancel each other out and you're left with dynamic pressure. A glass cockpit's airspeed indicator uses the same method to function. Next up is the altimeter. A standard altimeter contains a stack of sealed aneroid wafers with an internal pressure of 29.92 inches of mercury. Air pressure is allowed into the system via the static ports. As you increase in altitude, the outside air pressure goes down and this is translated to your altimeter in feet through a set of gears and is indicated as altitude above mean sea level. Our final static pitot instrument is the vertical speed indicator or VSI. It indicates your rate of ascent or descent and it detects this using the pressure indicated by the static ports on the aircraft's fuselage. Our final three instruments in the classic six-pack are all implemented using gyroscopes. In a real aircraft like the 152, when you power up using the master switch, you can actually hear the gyros spinning up. Our first gyro instrument is the attitude indicator, or AI, sometimes referred to as the artificial horizon. It shows the aircraft's position relative to the horizon. Following this, we have the heading indicator, which shows the direction of the aircraft or heading relative to magnetic north. Finally, we have the turn coordinator, a type of inclinometer that shows the direction and rate of turns as well as the amount of slip or skid present in the current turn, if any. We're lucky that glass cockpits tend to share the same display methodologies and functionality. 
Moving from one glass cockpit to another is generally not difficult at all, just like moving from one aircraft's steam gauges to another's is a pretty seamless transition. Before we move on to the glass cockpit and how it implements the traditional steam gauges, let's take a quick look at what types of glass cockpits are included in the aircraft in the base sim. This list of aircraft all retain the steam gauges. Garmin is a dominant player in general aviation while Rockwell Collins and Honeywell Thales tend to dominate the commercial space. We have a single example of the Garmin G3000 system that's primarily targeted at turboprop systems. It's provided in the Dower TBM930. One of the two most common types of glass cockpits included in the sim is the Garmin G1000. This system implements two display panels, primary flight display or PFD that contains navigation and instrumentation displays among other things, and a multifunction display that contains the engine monitoring elements as well as maps and charts. The aircraft that are equipped with this system in the sim are the Diamond DA-40NG and DA-62, the Beach Bonanza G36, and the Cessna 172 and the Caravan. Next up is the Garmin G3X. Introduced in 2014 by Garmin, the G3X provides a touch screen interface to the glass cockpit. This is included in the Beach King Air, Cub Crafters, X Cub, Icon A5, and the Flight Design CTSL. The Extra 330LT comes equipped with the lower cost Garmin G500 system. Rounding out the Garmin systems is the Robin Cap 10. It comes equipped with the Garmin GNS430 GPS navigation system. The Boeing 747 and Airbus A320 airliners come equipped with Honeywell Tails glass cockpit systems while the Cessna Citation CJ-4 uses the Rockwell Collins Proline Fusion glass cockpit. All other aircraft, as previously stated, are equipped with steam gauges. As previously stated, once you understand how instrumentation is implemented in one glass cockpit, using a different glass cockpit should be easy due to the consistent designs between them. Typically, the biggest differences occur in the user interfaces of the systems. In the same order as a steam gauge overview at the beginning, let's start with the airspeed indicator and see how that's implemented in a glass cockpit. I'll use the primary flight display or PFD from the G1000 for most of these comparisons. The airspeed indicator is presented in this vertical scrolling scale on the left side of the PFD here. Airspeed is presented with white text in knots inside of this black arrow indicator here. At the bottom is a true airspeed value also presented in knots. True airspeed being indicated airspeed corrected for temperature and pressure altitude. Our altimeter is replaced by this vertical running scale on the right side of the PFD. This is our altitude above mean sea level. Just as with the airspeed indicator, we have a black arrow to indicate the current value. Below the scale, you can see that we have the current barometric pressure it's set for the instrument. In this case, it's set to the typical 29.92 inches of mercury. Our VSI or vertical speed indicator is replaced by this smaller vertical scale next to the altimeter that shows our rate of climb as a positive number and our rate of descent as a negative number using the same kind of black arrow indicator as the airspeed indicator. If no value is present in the arrow, then the aircraft is neither climbing or descending. The attitude indicator or artificial horizon is this set of elements here in the upper center part of the display. The static arrow at the top indicates the amount of degrees of pitch that the aircraft is doing. The white line across the display indicates the horizon and the yellow arrows that you see here are showing the aircraft's position relative to the horizon. 
The heading indicator is this compass radial display down at the bottom here. The static white arrow at the top indicating your heading relative to magnetic north. And finally, we have our turn coordinator. This scale up here indicates degrees of banking indicated by this arrow here. Below that arrow, we have our turn coordinator. Its split arrow indicator works basically the same as the inclinometer on the traditional six pack. It indicates your current amount of bank as well as when you should apply more or less rudder in your turn with the lower part of the split arrow indicator. Our last item is the AFCS or Automatic Flight Control System. This feature provides automated flight features such as autopilot, altitude, and heading hold. This feature is not present in all glass cockpits. The smaller Garmin G3X, for example, lacks this feature. Most aircraft equipped with AFCS can automatically follow a preloaded flight plan with little to no input from the pilot if desired. Some aircraft can even land themselves using the more sophisticated AFCS systems typically found on larger airliners and the like. While you may not always have a need for the full autopilot, the heading and altitude hold features can be a great pleasure to use since they allow you to relax a bit on longer flights without having to engage the flight control systems yourself. If this video does well, I'll create another video as part of this series that'll cover the AFCS systems in detail. Okay, that's it for this introduction to glass cockpit technology. Sadly, Microsoft Flight Simulator's implementation of some of the glass cockpit features is seriously lacking. So there are features that I won't be able to demonstrate and cover in the series. Don't be shy about letting a Sobo know about your desire to have this situation remedied. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this, please like the videos. That really helps. Sharing it on other sites like Facebook is also a huge help and will encourage me to create the follow-up episodes for this series of videos. Until the next video, take care.